gentlemen, Pencils versus Pixels. I loved this documentary. It really takes us through a fantastic journey through the history of animation. Uh, the first question I have for you guys is, uh, what was the first uh, animated feature or series that made you fall in love with the medium? And we'll start with you, Bay. I mean, when I was a kid, I watched uh, Transformers and G.I. Joe and Thundercats and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And so that was... You know, that's a, my, my, one of the first things I remember seeing when I was a kid. So I think that was where, where I began this journey. Yeah, I think, gosh, I think Dumbo. Wow. Dumbo and uh, Jungle Book. Those I remember those movies. That, I think the Jungle Book was my first movie in the theater when they replayed it. And I know I know that they it came out a long time ago. <laughs> like when they, re, you know, re, uh, re-released it in theaters. Re-released it, yeah. Like I remember seeing that and, and yeah, so... <laughs> That's incredible. Now, Ming-Na Wen, she's the perfect narrator for this journey, um, and she has an extensive history in the world of animation, most famously voicing Mulan. Um, what brought her to this project, uh, and what did she bring to this film that you guys are surprised by? Oh, I was going to say, she's you know very close with Tom and Tony Bancroft. Uh, Tom is one of the producers on this film. Tony, his brother, directed Mulan, so they, they brought her in, and she's been very, very supportive of this project, and I think she brought... She, her voice is so amazing that she's made so much, her career is so much based on this insane voice that she has. So having her guide us through this just makes it, it elevates it beyond measure. So we're so yeah. grateful for her. Phil, did you want to add to that? That's actually kind of what I was going to say. Like, you know, Tony and Tom working on Mulan, that they kind of built that relationship on that movie. So yeah, they, that's, I, I think actually when we were starting the discussion about the film i asked about can we get like mulan or like can we get mingna and then he was like oh yeah you know and then i think that um because back then i was you know the idea was to have more animation throughout the film too so we're gonna have even more of being not coming in, you know, and it just was so much of a task. We couldn't do exactly what we were wanting, but like that was kind of how she was going to be brought in because she's a huge fan of animation. She's just such an amazing person. And uh, yeah, so that's, yeah, kind of same thing as what babe was going to say. <laughs> so wait, there was going to be more of how we saw her towards the end of uh, the film where, where they're explaining like the straight lines and stuff. Yeah, we were, the idea was to be throughout, we were going to have like, you know, like kind of like the old classic documentaries that Disney would do where like the animation Lord. would almost like interact with live action. So we were going to, we did a, that obviously for, you know, the end credits, but like we were going to have it like where, the, you know, Tom Bank or Tony was talking and he looked on his shoulder and, you know would talk to her and that would be incorporated into the film but we just couldn't do that yet because we were still building the film and the you know figuring out like how it would flow we didn't know how to write her into that type of stuff so it kind of formed out the way it is now you know which was really good but yeah, yeah it's that amazing. Was kind of the idea is to have her kind of throughout and um explaining the steps of animation while you're uh, while you're watching the film and stuff so so what sparked this interest for you guys to want to do a documentary following uh, like the 2D animation world all the way to 3D animation? Yeah, well, I'm friends with John Pomeroy. He he worked on uh, so many movies. The, the Dragon's Lair game, he created that. He animated that game. He all American the, Tale, man. Yep, American Tale, um, which I have so many cool stories about. That's actually interviewing him for a bio my friend Julian and I were doing is how it sparked the idea. Him telling oh, wow. his story about animation and how he at first was just wanting to be a, a background artist at Disney for animation when he did his first pencil test that he like, that's what blew his mind. He was like, I can't believe this. You can actually do this. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And so, I mean, he was telling stories like how Michael Jackson asked him to, to come to his house for a dinner party once. And he turned him down because like he went to, he, he was celebrating his anniversary with his wife and that was more important to him. And, that's and I just, there's so many cool, like they're in the, they're in the presence of so many like talented people all the time. Like Steven Spielberg calling him up and saying, I loved your movie. I got to meet with you. We got to talk about stuff. So there's so many things that nobody knows because the only things we're fed are, 
are little just snippets of the animation process, but we don't know the the journey and the the heart and the the struggle behind it. So I, you know, after spending time with John, I was like, I called Tom up and I was like, I couldn't sleep. I was just like, got to get this out because like, I love all these animation documentaries, but this is not something I've seen before. I need, I needed like to talk to somebody, you know? So I was talking to Tom, I was like, I want to make this film. And then he was like, yes, yes. Can I be the producer? And I was like, why do you think I called you? I want you to be the producer, <laughs> you know? And, and so, uh, so that's kind of like the initial spark, which led to very passionate years of like, you know, trying to figure this thing out, trying to get it going, building a great team like Bay and, and all of the people on our, there's a lot more people on our team, you know, and, and at first it was very small and it got bigger, you know, but uh, that's kind of how it started getting it going. And it just kind of like every interview was drop, jaw dropping. Like yeah. we were, we would go one way and then we'd, we'd ask them these questions, but they would give us the other information, like way more than we were asking for. And we we're like, Oh my gosh, like this is way bigger than, you know, like we thought. It's and so I, I was lucky. Cause when I, when I was brought on board, they had already done so much work of initially interviewing some of these people that it was, the story was just emerging very clearly. And then I got to help fill in the the spaces where we didn't have the, the people we wanted to talk to or the story we wanted to have. And, and me being based in LA, I had access to a lot of people out here that are local that we got to, spend time with. So it was, uh, with the minute I saw the first bit of footage from it that they had already shot, I was just in, this is my movie. This is a movie I've, I've wanted to see. I didn't know that I needed to, I, I didn't, I did not know needed to exist. And I was so happy to be able to help make it. Yeah, I completely agree with you. There's so much information that I didn't know either. Like, uh, I, obviously, Disney this year is celebrating their 100th year anniversary. And uh, when you think of 2D, anim 2D animation, you really think of Walt Disney Studios being first and foremost. Now, uh, the the story of the nine old men, like I, I, did, I knew about them, but I didn't know how in depth they were. Can you talk about how their influence uh, is kind of even felt even now to in today's animation. Yeah, I mean yeah. they they were the ones that that were the mentors to many of the people in our film. They it's a it's a tradition of 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 mentor and mentee or protege of it's that's the tradition that's been going on for the last hundred years. And, and Phil, if you want to add, to yeah, that. That, the, the way that they used to teach, it was like even though they were who they were they would take in anybody with the willingness and they would like literally just pour into them. And so uh, hearing a lot about that from John Pomeroy, he, he, he's just like, here I am with all these, you know, the nine old men and they're teaching me how to do these things. You know, that's just so cool because in, in the world now it's a little different right. and in that you don't really get to talk to those people. You can learn from like documentation and videos and all that stuff, but like you don't get to learn one on one. And that's actually something every animator we talk to is talk, they always want to reestablish is that mentorship is that creating teams of people who are underneath legends and people who can like actually like breed this talent like the the steps into how to think you know it's it's a way of thinking to animate you know and you have to feel it and it's, there's so much into it that it's hard to read about you know but it but to hear it from the lips of somebody who knows how to do it and they can talk about their struggle like this is really hard. Like everybody's struggle is hands, arms, and like nobody wants to draw them. So when you see a lot of animation, you know, or like cartoons, when people draw them, they just draw like the face and like this part. A lot people of close-ups. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like just being able to talk to someone who's a professional who is just as frustrated as you with those types of animation features, sure. that, that is so cool to be able to be like, hey, I'm not alone. Even these guys. Right had a hard time with this, you know, and, and so yeah. getting to be in that. And also, it, and also their, their influence, it's almost like the Beatles of animation, the Beatles sure. influence will, has been going on for the last, you know, 60 years. It's the same. There would be no, like the films that are happening now wouldn't have happened the same way without those influences back then. So it's, it, it cannot be overstated. Now, I feel with every new animated film that comes out, there's either like a new technique that's learned or a new technology that's helping the creative process. Where do you guys think the uh, future of animation is going? And we'll start with you, Bay. Well, we try to include a little bit of this in the film, but there are 
there's there's a lot of different paths that could, this could go on from from VR to AR to all these different ways of experiencing animation and experiential versions of it. But even just the idea that I have an iPad sitting right here that has animation software on it, that that would not have been possible five years ago or 10 years ago, let alone 50 years ago, that the democratization of animation, much like everyone having a phone with a camera that they can film and they're used to filming things, we're going to see things that we can't possibly conceive of because our brains don't work the way that these, these kids growing up now, their brains work. So I'm very excited to see what happens. Yeah. I, along with Bay, I agree with all that too. And I just think that it's just going to be a huge influx of new inspiration, new styles because of that access, the accessibility of like being able to animate on your phone. And, you know, it's just, it's going to be crazy. The type of, like, like there's going to be more incorporation with 3d, like we see in, you know, uh, Ninja Turtles and, and Spider-Man, you know, there's, yeah, it's just the, the, sorry, I'm trying to word it right. But 2d animation is like when we were at Pixar, they said that like, they will never be, they will never move forward or like 2d animation will always be a part of Pixar because that's how they try They try to make the 3d look more like 2d. And so that's like, they literally do drawovers, which is like, here's the 3d animation. And then we're, you know, Glenn Keen introduced the whole drawover thing where he would go in and he would draw over 2d style. And then they would formulate those 3d animations to look like that. So like, I think it's going to not only be like, blow up as far as more content online and streamability. Like, I think it's also going to be incorporated into learning and lessons. And like, you know, when people are learning 3d animation, they're going to have to, you know, they're going to have to like learn the, the structure and the, and you know, the foundation of animation in general. And that's kind of super important. And, and so, yeah, I, I think the future of animation is going to be like what Bay said, not only really cool stuff in, in VR and, and different technologies we don't even like know about yet, but you know, it's definitely, it's, I don't think it's ever going to die. I think it's only going to just get better. So I couldn't agree more. Well, look, pencils versus pixels is a fantastic look at the animation world. I feel like anybody that's ever loved animation, you'll get sucked right into this documentary. Thank you guys so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thanks man.